Hi, Rick here from Marinville Models, DHI dealer from the UK and RC specialist over 40 years. So today I'm actually out and about. Um, I've recently gotten into photogrammetry, that's capturing photos and rendering them into like um, like maps and 3D models. Uh, so today I've come out to one of my sort of local spots that I come to quite a lot to practice. I'm going to capture some video and then turn them into a sort of 3D render. Okay, so the place I've actually come to today is Bangour Village Hospital. Uh, in West Lothian in Scotland. Um, it's actually a disused hospital. Um, it's a what we call a sort of Victorian villa style hospital. So you have lots of little Victorian buildings that all had a different use. It was originally used as a, a rehabilitation uh, hospital for servicemen that were injured during the First World War. But it's it's gone under various guises since then, but it's now closed. However, it makes a really good uh, place for training and uh, Fortunately, we've had uh, we've got permission from the um, the NHS to actually fly here. And as most of all the buildings are now condemned, um, we don't have to worry about getting too close to them. So, a very sad state of affairs for these lovely old Victorian buildings, all just decaying away. I actually, remember in the uh, late eighties, I actually used to come up here. There was a hall. I think it was a church hall. Uh, we used to race model cars every, I think it was every Sunday night if I remember right. That was a long time ago. I think the actual, uh, the actual whole place shut down in the 90s if I remember right. So the job at hand today is what I want to do is I want to uh, render this uh, old church which sits in the middle of all the grounds. So I'm going to be using a Phantom 4 today. I'm going to run some orbits around it, capture all the frames and then we'll use software to uh, knit it all together. Okay, so I'm going to be using my Phantom 4 for this job today. Um, starting to get a little bit windy, which is not ideal, but uh, go with what we have. Okay, so here we go. I'm doing first I'm actually flying right above the uh, right above the church uh, so I can set the point of interest so point of interest altitude record point of interest then what we'll do is we'll then back up and then all I have to do is manually take the photos as I fly around Okay, so what I've done is, that's me now finished, and what I've done is, if I go down to the tablet here, there, okay, so you can see it, I've flown two rotations uh, round the centre point, which is kind of in the middle of the screen there. Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't have 3G on my tablet, so the map's not there, but in the centre of that circle basically is the... Uh, uh, is the church and I've flown two rotations round at different heights and then we're going to take these uh, pictures home and then knit them together with a uh, photo scan. So my uh, trusty um, P4 has done well because the wind's actually picked up, I don't know if you can hear it coming through in the microphone but the wind's got a lot windier and it was kind of struggling going into wind sometimes um, however it was good when I was downwind I was able to put in sport mode and get back really quickly. Okay, so that's us back now. Uh, what I've done is I've put the SD card in my laptop. We've got uh, Agisoft PhotoScan. Now, this is not a tutorial on how to use the software because, to be honest with you, I am very much learning myself. So, the first thing you do is quite, it's kind of like a workflow the, the way that this works. So, you just simply um, you add your photos in and then you just go through 
these uh, builds as they call them and it slowly builds them up because depending on actually what you want to do with your model you may not want a sort of pretty colorful model so now i've already ran through all these process because it can take quite a long time especially on my laptop which is not exactly rocking um but the first thing it does is it picks out all these like so i call them kind of like points of interest but it's like all this sort of areas of the model that kind of catch edges etc so just now it just looks a little bit like a dotted um uh like a sort of dotted mosaic but um but it is actually there is a model in there now along the top here we've got all the different build processes so as i slowly click on them you'll basically see how it slowly kind of builds up a model and you have different sort of depending on what you want you have sort of different sort of levels of detail so for example you've got that one there which gives you it's kind of like um it's like if you imagine like a sort of vac form mold sitting over like a sort of wire mesh so it kind of makes it solid uh, and then you had like this one which is kind of where it puts all the color into although it looks actually like it's like a melted jelly and we've got another sort of level of that uh, this is the mesh so that's kind of what's sitting under it and that's what the computer sees as the actual shape as it's rendered all the photos and then finally uh, you get the actual finished one now depending on how good your computer is and if it's a lot better at rendering then you're going to get much better results uh, but this actually works out not too bad now if I just go into uh, blah, 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 full uh, full screen be able to show you this a bit better because what we can do is we can actually zoom in now this is going to be a little bit chuggy because you know, I told you my laptop is not specifically good something I will need to sort out so you can zoom in and you can actually see there that the detail is actually uh, pretty damn good so let's back out a wee bit we can um, sorry computer just takes time to react uh, we can actually uh, spin it around now you see these axes that glow so it tells you which ones you can actually spin around so you can actually spin this model around now what I actually thought was actually really good was when I was actually taking this uh, uh, taking the actual pictures uh, the sun was actually going in and out so some of the pictures were taken in the shade and some were in the sun but as you can see when I actually spin the model around you can actually see the entire model is actually now in the sun now I, it did actually take a lot more um, of an area than what you see here I've actually had to cut it because what you end up getting because the camera only shoots the front of buildings then there's like no background to it so it kind of looks like a hollow so as you can see where the edges of those trees were um, I've actually sort of uh, cut them off but it's a it's full 3d model whoops so you can oh, rock it the wrong way if you shoot on low or res this will obviously work much smoother just highlight the right axis we can spin over the top and you can see it's a full 3d model and then that can get exported you can either which i thought is quite good if you just want to show someone or send somebody you can actually export the model if i just go into here um, you can actually see it'll actually export it in a um, Adobe PDF so you just send somebody the PDF and in their PDF um, uh, viewer they can uh, have complete control of the model so they wouldn't have to have the software as well as of course um, it will export in many other ways which are obviously very much for the sort of industries you see you've got all sorts of these are all the, the options you have got of, um, of exporting which I'm still finding out but um, uh, just actually going back, um, so if you are interested in this uh, software, if I just uh, get to full screen, um, if you are interested in this software, there's quite a lot of guides and videos online uh, that you can um, check out. Uh, so one of the uh, crash sort of courses I came across actually just to allow you to sort of plow through the flow for recommended settings uh, was this here. Um, so that's the web address there. Certainly worth a look. It kind of just takes you through all the sort of various steps of sort of rendering your first model. Kind of roughly explains what they are. It's not a, a, a full guide. You will find plenty more online. One of the other ones I looked at is a guy or a, uh, of a, a site on YouTube called Drone Minds. He's definitely worth a look. He um, is what kind of, because before I used to just use a mapping software that would like uh, map pilot and it would just basically fly up and down um, an area of ground and then it would stitch all the pictures and you would have like a flat, uh, flat map 
which I've also imported into the software and that has rendered it into a model which worked quite good but uh, drone mines kind of got me onto this sort of flying in a rotation like a point of interest around a model and then buildings which are normally quite tall um, will render into 3D models much better. Now the place I was actually flying at Bangor if you're interested um, which is a fantastic place to fly uh, it's worth if you want to sort of see it in more of its sort of glory as it were um, if you want to check out this guy this is one of our local um, droners um, you can see that's his username down there uh, and literally just pick out this one video um, I'll be honest with you his stuff is really really good um, and it does tend to show um, Bangor to the sort of full potential just show you a little bit of footage from his uh, video his stuff is really good he's done lots of sort of local spots but this is the one that he uh, takes in Bangor and as I say it's just a huge area multiple buildings lots of different types some are condemned some are actually falling in on themselves which is really sad some of them are actually in really good condition they don't have fences around so you can actually get quite close only downside is we're always warned by security if one of your drones goes down on top of one of the buildings it, that is it no one can go in the buildings, they are all technically condemned. Now there are lots of different softwares out there. Um, I'm using it as a Aggie Soft, which is kind of quite a pricey bit of software, but I think they do do like a 30-day um, trial. Uh, it's certainly worth looking at different ones and seeing which ones. There's no point in having something overcomplicated if you don't really uh, need it. Uh, but this is just an overview of just something I'm uh, like getting into and learning more about and I do think if you're getting into things commercially it would definitely be uh, something worth looking at uh, just to expand maybe if you're already doing it commercially you could use it for expanding your portfolio. So I'm Rick from Man of a Models, DJI dealer from the UK and RC specialist for over 40 years. I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Cheers!